pre-dreadnought battleships are seagoing battleships built between the mid to late 1880s and 1905, before the launch of HMS Dreadnought. Pre-dreadnoughts replaced the ironclad battleships of the 1870s and 1880s. Built from steel, and protected by hardened steel armor, pre-dreadnought battleships carried a main battery of very heavy guns in barbets supported by one or more secondary batteries of lighter weapons. They were powered by coal-fueled triple-expansion steam engines. In contrast to the chaotic development of ironclad warships in preceding decades, the 1890s saw navies worldwide start to build battleships to a common design as dozens of ships essentially followed the design of the British, Majestic class. The similarity in appearance of battleships in the 1890s was underlined by the increasing number of ships being built. New naval powers such as Germany, Japan, the United States, and, to a lesser extent, Italy and Austria-Hungary, began to establish themselves with fleets of pre-dreadnoughts, while the navies of Britain, France, and Russia expanded to meet these new threats. The decisive clash of pre-dreadnought fleets was between the Imperial Russian Navy and the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Battle of Tsushima on 27 May 1905. These battleships were abruptly made obsolete by the arrival of HMS Dreadnought in 1906. Dreadnought followed the trend in battleship design to heavier, longer-range guns by adopting an all-big guns armament scheme of 10-12-inch guns. Her innovative steam turbine engines also made her faster. The existing pre-dreadnoughts were decisively outclassed, and new and more powerful battleships were from then on known as dreadnoughts while the ships laid down previously were designated pre-dreadnoughts. Evolution the pre-dreadnought developed from the ironclad battleship. The first ironclads, French battleship La Gloire and HMS Warrior, looked much like sailing frigates, with three tall masts and broadside batteries. When they were commissioned at the start of the 1860s, only eight years later HMVS Cerberus, the first breastwork monitor, was launched. Only three years later followed HMS Devastation, a turreted ironclad which more resembled a pre-dreadnought than previous and contemporary turretless ironclads. Each ship lacked masts and carried four heavy guns in two turrets fore and aft. Devastation was the first ocean-worthy breastwork monitor, built to attack enemy coasts and harbors, because of her very low freeboard. She could not fight on the high seas as her decks would be swept by water and spray, interfering with the working of her guns. Navies worldwide continued to build masted, turretless battleships which had sufficient freeboard and were seaworthy enough to fight on the high seas. The distinction between coast assault battleship and cruising battleship became blurred with the Admiral class, ordered in 1880. These ships reflected developments in ironclad design, being protected by iron and steel compound armor rather than wrought iron, equipped with breech-loading guns of between 12-inch and 16 and a quarter-inch caliber. The Admirals continued the trend of ironclad warships towards gigantic weapons. The guns were mounted in open barbets to save weight. Some historians see these ships as a vital step towards pre-dreadnoughts, others view them as a confused and unsuccessful design. The subsequent Royal Sovereign class of 1889 retained barbets but were uniformly armed with 13.5-INCH guns. They were also significantly larger and faster than the Admirals. Just as importantly, the royal sovereigns had a higher freeboard, making them unequivocally capable of the high seas battleship role. The pre-dreadnought design reached maturity in 1895 with the Majestic class. These ships were built and armored entirely of steel, and their guns were mounted in fully enclosed barbets, inevitably referred to as turrets. They also adopted a 12-inch main gun which, due to advances in casting and propellant, was lighter and more powerful than the previous guns of larger caliber. The Majestics provided the model for battleship building in the Royal Navy and many other navies for years to come. Armament 
Pre-dreadnoughts carried guns of several different calibers, for different roles in ship-to-ship -ship combat. The main armament was four heavy guns, mounted in two centerline turrets fore and aft. Very few pre-dreadnoughts deviated from this arrangement. These guns were slow firing, and initially of limited accuracy, but they were the only guns heavy enough to penetrate the thick armor which protected the engines, magazines, and main guns of enemy battleships. The most common caliber for the main armament was 12 inches. Although some ships used smaller guns because they could attain higher rates of fire, British battleships from the Majestic class onwards carried this caliber, as did French ships from the Charlemagne class. Japan, importing most of its guns from Britain, used 12-inch guns. The United States used both 12-inch and 13-inch guns for most of the 1890s until the main class laid down in 1899, after which the 12-in gun was universal. The Russians used both 12 and 10-inch as their main armament. The Petropavlos class, Rytvizan, Zazarevich, and Borodino class had 12-inch main batteries while the Perisvet class mounted 10-inch guns. The first German pre-dreadnought class used an 11-inch gun but decreased to a 9.4-inch gun for the two following classes and returned to 11-inch guns with the Braunschweig class. While the caliber of the main battery remained quite constant, the performance of the guns improved as longer barrels were introduced. The introduction of slow-burning nitrocellulose and cordite propellant allowed the employment of a longer barrel, and therefore higher muzzle velocity, giving greater range and penetrating power for the same caliber of shell. Between the Majestic class and Dreadnought, the length of the British 12-inch gun increased from 35 calibers to 45 and muzzle velocity increased from 706 meters per second to 770 meters per second. Pre-dreadnoughts also carried a secondary battery. This consisted of smaller guns, typically 6-inch, though any caliber from 4 to 9.4 inches could be used. Virtually all secondary guns were quick-firing, employing a number of innovations to increase the rate of fire. The propellant was provided in a brass cartridge, and both the breech mechanism and the mounting were suitable for rapid aiming and reloading. The role of the secondary battery was to damage the less well-armored parts of an enemy battleship, while unable to penetrate the main armor belt. It might score hits on lightly armored areas like the bridge or start fires. Equally important, the secondary armament was to be used against enemy cruisers, destroyers, and even torpedo boats. A medium caliber gun could expect to penetrate the light armor of smaller ships while the rate of fire of the secondary battery was important in scoring a hit against a small, maneuverable target. Secondary guns were mounted in a variety of ways, sometimes carried in turrets. They were just as often positioned in fixed armored casemates in the side of the hull, or in unarmored positions on upper decks. Some of the pre-dreadnoughts carried an intermediate battery, typically of 8-inch to 10-inch caliber. The intermediate battery was a method of packing more heavy firepower into the same battleship, principally of use against battleships or at long ranges. The United States Navy pioneered the intermediate battery concept in the Indiana, Iowa, and Kursage classes but not in the battleships laid down between 1897 and 1901. Shortly after the USN re-adopted the intermediate battery, the British, Italian, Russian, French, and Japanese navies laid down intermediate battery ships. This later generation of intermediate battery ships almost without exception finished building after dreadnought, and hence were obsolete before completion. During the Ironclad Age, the range of engagements increased. In the Sino-Japanese War of 1894-5 battles were fought at around one mile, while in the Battle of the Yellow Sea in 1904, the Russian and Japanese fleets fought at ranges at 3.5 miles. 
The increase in engagement range was due in part to the longer range of torpedoes, and in part to improved gunnery and fire control. In consequence, shipbuilders tended towards heavier secondary armament of the same caliber that the intermediate battery had been previously, the Royal Navy's last pre-dreadnought class, the Lord Nelson class carried 10.9.2 INCH guns his secondary armament. Ships with a uniform, heavy secondary battery are often referred to as semi-dreadnoughts. The pre-dreadnoughts armament was completed by a tertiary battery of light, rapid-fire guns. These could be of any caliber from 3-inch down to machine guns. Their role was to give short-range protection against torpedo boats, or to rake the deck and superstructure of a battleship. In addition to their gun armament, many pre-dreadnought battleships were armed with torpedoes, fired from fixed tubes located either above or below the waterline. By the pre-dreadnought era the torpedo was typically 18 inch in diameter and had an effective range of several thousand meters. However, it was virtually unknown for a battleship to score a hit with a torpedo. Protection Pre-dreadnought battleships carried a considerable weight of steel armor. Experience showed that rather than giving the ship uniform armor protection, it was best to concentrate armor over critical areas. The central section of the hull, which housed the boilers and engines, was protected by the main belt which ran from just below the waterline to some distance above it. This central citadel was intended to protect the engines from even the most powerful shells. The main armament in the magazines were protected by projections of thick armor from the main belt. The beginning of the pre-dreadnought era was marked by a move from mounting the main armament in open barbets to an all-enclosed turret mounting. The main belt hammer would normally tapir to a lesser thickness along the side of the hull towards bow and stern. It might also taper up from the central citadel towards the superstructure. The deck was typically lightly armored with 2 to 4 inches of steel. This lighter armor was to prevent high explosive shells from wrecking the superstructure of the ship. The battleships of the late 1880s, for instance the Royal Sovereign class, were armored with iron and steel compound armor. This was soon replaced with more effective case-hardened steel armor made using the Harvey process developed in the United States. First tested in 1891, Harvey armor was commonplace in ships laid down in 1893-5. However, its reign was brief. In 1895, the German Kaiser Friedrich III pioneered the even better Krupp armor. Europe adopted Krupp plate within five years, and only the United States persisted in using Harvey steel into the 20th century. The improving quality of armor plate meant that new ships could have better protection from a thinner and lighter armor belt. 12 inches of compound armor provided the same protection as just 7.5 inches of Harvey or 5.75 inches of Krupp. Propulsion Almost all pre-dreadnoughts were powered by reciprocating steam engines. Most were capable of top speeds between 16 and 18 knots. The ironclads of the 1880s used compound engines, and by the end of the 1880s the even more efficient triple expansion compound engine was in use. Some fleets, though not the British, adopted the quadruple expansion steam engine. The main improvement in engine performance during the pre-dreadnought period came from the adoption of increasingly higher pressure steam from the boiler. Scotch marine boilers were superseded by more compact water tube boilers, allowing higher pressure steam to be produced with less fuel consumption. Water tube boilers were also safer, with less risk of explosion, and more flexible than fire tube types. The Belleville-type water tube boiler had been introduced in the French fleet as early as 1879, but it took until 1894 for the Royal Navy to adopt it for armoured cruisers and pre-dreadnoughts. Other water tube boilers followed in navies worldwide. The engines drove either two or three screw propellers. 
France and Germany preferred the three-screw approach, which allowed the engines to be shorter and hence more easily protected. They were also more maneuverable and had better resistance to accidental damage. Triple screws were, however, generally larger and heavier than the twin screw arrangements preferred by most other navies. The French also built the only class of turbine-powered pre-dreadnought battleships, the Danton class of 1907. Coal was the almost exclusive fuel for the pre-dreadnought period, though Navisa made the first experiments with oil propulsion in the late 1890s. An extra knot or two of speed could be gained by applying a force draft to the furnaces, where air was pumped into the furnaces, but this risked damage to the boilers.